and Cork is in the jump circle against Adeke, and the tip is won by Adeke, and gaining possession is Monsanto. And here's Brewer in that point forward type position that we may see him in a lot tonight. Adeke early post touch knocked away by Cork. Now Adeke goes to work. Down low with the left-handed baby hook. It's a miss, and the rebound is for Hightower in his second game this season. Set play. That's what was missing against Alabama. Deep post touches. Bucks pounded inside. Adeke turns that right shoulder where he's so comfortable it can't get it to go down. Tyler Harris lost that one on the way up. Adeke, good defense to help and forcing the turnover are the Bucks. And that's doing what Adeke does, defending that back line. Not a guy that's going to protect the rim, but a crafty, heady defender. Moves his feet, gets into position as a secondary defender, makes sure he's set outside the restricted arc and takes the punishment. One of the things ETSU does so well, forcing turnovers. That's their defensive calling card so far this year is a kick ball from Harris. They'll give ETSU 20 on the shot clock. And that's another key for Western, to play without fouling, especially on the defensive end. Multiple disqualifications early this year for both Cork and Faulkner. In the corner, it's Brewer. Ladarius, a tough step back three, misses it short. His brother Ty watches onto the bench as the southern southeastern Missouri transfer, I should say, misses on the triple. And here's Halverson kicking it over to Harris. And now the drive by Faulkner. He also loses it down low. Faulkner might be a tie-up. It is possession arrow favors Western Carolina. Out of the four-out set, Cork the lone post. A lot of screening off the balls. They'll try to create space for Halverson and Iso Cork on the low block. 16 on the shot clock in the short floor. Halverson is having his best season as a catamount. This ball is thrown in the backcourt for him, but Brewer's first to it. Brewer to the trailer, Monsanto. What a defensive play by Halverson taking the charge. Didn't give up on the play, busted it back. ETSU, a mantra under Steve Forbes and Jason Shea, making it tough on baseline out of bounds. Get the live ball turnover in the short floor, but can't convert. The 618 fans making themselves heard tonight. 10% capacity allowed for ETSU. First time they've hosted fans this year. This is Cork, post touch for him against the deck. A beautiful pass and the catch by Hightower, the finish at the rim. Even though Cork may not be a threat to score from the mid-range, you still have to have high hands when you defend him. Too easy a pitch and catch. Nice cut, nice pitch, nice catch, nice conversion. Hightower 17-7 against College of Charleston in his Western Carolina debut before break. They're going to a decade again in the left block. This time he goes middle. Misses with the offhand. Rebound fought for Bonnie Patterson. And a foul. Looking for a tie-up for the Catamounts. Instead, whistled was Hightower. Both teams open half court man to man. Bucks with a little four out action also. Adeke with a deep post touch. Unable to convert on the offhand jump hook. Bonnie Patterson active on the offensive glass, keeping it alive. A trip to the line, Patterson. We featured in our city impact players to watch, and this is not a strong suit of his. Nine of 19 from the free throw line this year. Yeah, didn't fit, did not feature the free tosses. Splits the pair, and ETSU is on the board. Two to one, Western Carolina, two minutes in. Faulkner has Harris open in the corner, didn't see him. Halverson tries to save it, and it somehow finds its way back to Faulkner. Left wing three is on the way, long for Hightower. That's not really his game. It was 0 for 4 against Charleston, now 0 for 5 on the season as the Bucs come away with the boards. Yeah, that's a break for Western if ETSU is able to secure that. They're off to the races with Halverson falling out of bounds. Monsanto hit six threes against Alabama. His initial attempt off the heel and Western Carolina clears. Monsanto really responded favorably to moving into that starting lineup. Harris. Too strong over a decade. Rebound for Ladarius Brewer. Brewer stopped in transition by Harris. Sorrell Smith misses off the front of the rim, and he has had a really difficult time from the field in his first year at ETSU. And that's a low percentage shot early in the possession. Western's going to let him 
shoot contested twos all night. Hightower with the left hand received NCAA clearance on December 27th, or I should say 17th, to make his Catamount debut. And he's got his second early basket. You can't guard him too closely. He was nine for nine from the free throw line in, in his debut. Monsanto nearly had his pocket picked. Smith, another jumper from the right side. That one falls just off the other side of the rim from where Smith was standing. And once again, Western Carolina away with the board. Bodying up Cork is a decade. Those two battling baby hook in and out in the rebound for Monsanto. Good job by a decade. That's key for ETSU. Can a decade defend Cork straight up so the ETSU perimeter defenders don't have to dig and can stay on the perimeter shooters. Another charge taken by Halverson. He's giving away four or five inches and probably about 15, 20, maybe 30 pounds to Damari Monsanto, but he's able to make up with that. The lateral quickness to slide his feet over and take that bump. Yeah, I, I like the play. I like Monsanto taking it to the rim. Aggressive play, just a better play defensively by Halverson, moving his feet, getting in position, and taking the contact in the chest. Halverson just 6'1", 183. That could not have felt good, but sacrificed the body as Travion McRae will check in for Western Carolina. He's the one that was sent to the bench today with Hightower entering the starting lineup. Speaks volumes for the addition of Hightower because McRae's arguably their best athlete, a double figure scorer, and to this point their top on ball defender. Faulkner forces one up and the ball gets wedged between the rim and the glass, but only after a foul was drawn. Falk Ferguson Enterprises series history and it's a head-to-head -head that has been absolutely dominated by ETSU since Jason Shea showed up on staff. The Bucks have won all 11 against the Catamounts with Shea as an assistant under Steve Forbes. Eight of those coming by a double-digit margin. Today, Shea's first time facing Western as head coach, and it appears, Bruce, that these two programs are perhaps more evenly matched than ever entering today. Yeah, and you can't get any more even than they played each other last February. But that speaks volumes for Mark Prosser. He's really really behind when he took over, but what a turnaround from two years ago to last year. This is the fourth time that these two teams are facing each other in a calendar year. You don't see that often across any level of collegiate basketball, let alone a high mid-major here at Division I. As Faulkner makes both free throws, he is on the board, joining, joining Corey Hightower, who's got four and six to one catapults. And look for a deep post-touch early in the possession. See if the Bucks can stretch the floor vertically. Marcus Nyblack, Charlie Weber, and Ty Brewer, along with Richard Amafale, have all checked in with Ladarius Brewer, who's got the ball here. First Charlie Weber siding in a number of games. Tough fadeaway, and Brewer hits it. Who says the mid-range is dead? Ladarius Brewer with the bounce into the paint. Reverse pivot, jump, stop, fadeaway. First field goal for the Bucks. One of seven from the floor. Looked like a walk, not called. Amir Langley with the left-handed layup. <laughs> Hop, skip, and a jump. No question in the NBA. We see that called a lot in college. Langley's a guy. Instant energy off the bench, averaging Mike three rebounds, or excuse me, a rebound every three minutes. Going to work Amafale off the dribble, left it short. Good take, but didn't have the finish, and Langley clears the board. It was. Beautiful move, but you don't get style points when you have to finish. Langley against Weber. Picks it outside, going for the fake Nye Black. Pass deflected from Faulkner. It was heading to Halverson in a steal for ETSU. No numbers. Ty Brewer kicks it back to Ladarius. Might be another charge, and it is. This time, it's Trivion McRae taking it. Help side defenders, great job in terms of ball man integrity for Western Carolina. Sprinting to the paint as secondary defenders, sacrificing their body. Great play, McCray. ETSU led by head coach Jason Shea. Game number nine for him with the title of head coach. Learned under Bruce Pearl at Milwaukee and Tennessee, then under Steve Forbes at Northwest Florida State here at ETSU. Also a stop at North Dakota between his junior college stop and his current home. As a three is on the way, Faulkner leaves it short. Ch chasing down the rebound is Tyler Harris in the near corner. Big on both teams, so athletic. Harris running down offensive boards, sideline to sideline. 
Halverson takes a bump, still able to get it to Faulkner. That rims around and out, and a strong rebound by Patterson. And we're seven minutes in, Halverson still without a try. Linarius Brewer, 6-3 from the right wing. He's got both of UTSU's field goals. 8-6, Cat him out to the two-point lead. In transition with a rare, clean look. Faulkner can't answer back, and the rebound is for Brewer, that being top. Two quick shots by Faulkner in consecutive possessions. 38% from outside this year. He's a good shooter, but I'd like to see Western Carolina work for a little better of a shot than the ones he's got all the way down low. And Amafale had a point-blank look, but just a bit too strong. Back Langley down. He kept giving ground. Halverson, near corner. That's McCray, and he sinks it. Coach Prosser, it doesn't matter. Start coming off the bench. I don't care. Just give me some minutes. He had 26 on 13 shots against Division II Newberry. As that goes off BTSU last, that'll be a turnover for the Bucs. That's number four. Western Carolina has turned it over three times. The difference is ETSU, no points off turnovers. The Catamounts with four. Just a careless pass by Nye Black. Freshman mistake. You learn to value every possession once you hit league play. A decade back for ETSU, so too Sorrell Smith. The soft telegraph passes Mike in the open floor. Tend to go the other way once you reach late December. Sincere McMahon is in for the first time for those wearing black today. Drove, and pardon me, that was McCray that drove and kicked it out to Harris. Halverson facing the double. Harris had that one go right through the hands of McCray and out of bounds. Great job of defensive rotation. It's tough to help on the straight line driver. McCray got the head and shoulders around. Bucks there to answer. Ultimately forced the dead ball turnover. Both teams really getting after it on the defensive end game that you'd imagine would favor ETSU, Bruce, considering their defense has been what they've thrived on, where Western Carolina hasn't shown much of an interest in defense, more of an offensive team this year, as Patterson couldn't draw the foul and then couldn't convert at the rim. McCray all the way, absorbs the contact and puts it off the window. The offhand off the dead run, softly off the banking board. Catamounts out in transition. Smith. Bonnie Patterson going to set and take a three. Hard off the heel, and McCray with the board. In transition, three on two. Harris with the slam. Catamounts up by nine. Jason Shea may have to use a timeout, and that's exactly what's going to happen. It's been 24 years since Western Carolina has won in Johnson City. They've got their sights set on ending that streak today, and they're off to a good start. 15 to 6 Catamounts here on ESPN Plus. Shea for ETSU leading Western Carolina in his third season is Mark Prosser. Of course, that name familiar to the basketball fan Skip, known for taking every program he touched to the NCAA tournament, it seemed like. And Mark is in his third stint in the Southern Conference. Not only third year for Western Carolina, third stint in the Southern Conference. Two separate stops at Wofford. One and two decades ago. As we're back to action, it's 11 minutes to go in the first half. ETSU is down nine. Sorrell Smith, right elbow jump shot. Plangs off the front of the rim. Bonnie Patterson just inside the three-point arc with the rebound. Second chance for ETSU. Darius Brewer, a Euro step, and goes glass. Beautiful touch on the finger roll. Set play out of the box set, ATO. Smith unable to make the difficult contested two-pointer. Vonnie Patterson keeping the possession alive with the offensive board. Halverson against Brewer. Bounce pass stolen by Ladarius Brewer. Ty Brewer, the on-ball pressure. Ladarius with the takeaway. Terrell Smith penetrates, misses, a decade, also misses, and the rebound fought for by Ty Brewer and Sincere McMahon, and McMahon is going to draw the foul. 
when you have to finish. Great athletic play by a decade. Big run on the floor. Receives the dividend with the offensive board falling in his lap. This is the point blank range. A lot of contact there on Smith and then Adeke, I think he'll want that one back. But Arius Brewer is 3 for 4 from the field. The rest of the Bucks 0 for 12. A lot of length, good hops for Cork, blocking about two shots a game. As we mentioned, both as a primary and secondary defender. I think Adeke heard the footsteps. Halfway through the first half, Mason Faulkner does not have a field goal, but Western Carolina is still up seven. Diving after that one was the newly checked in Truth Harris. He was on the sideline, and so keeping the ball, Western Carolina. And we're 10 minutes in. Matt Halverson without a field goal attempt. That's 46 minutes on this floor in the last two games. Halverson without a field goal try. Terrell Smith on the reach end. You have to say, though, for Western Carolina, Bruce, incredibly encouraging to be up seven with those two not hitting their stride yet tonight. Oh, absolutely, and they're getting it done on the defensive end and turning that into offense. Four quick strike points. Xavier Cork, they're looking for him. The long loft into the post instead went outside to Faulkner. Harris against Ladarius Brewer. The Buck bench wanted a push off. Missing the jumper short and an acrobatic putback. Oh my goodness. Hanging in midair was the athletic high tower. Picks himself up off the deck. And that was an impressive one-handed attempt to try and put some thunder into the building, Bruce. Just relentless. Get with one arm pinned almost to the floor. High tower with athleticism and the strength and the hops to bust through it. Continues to knock down free throws at a high rate. Still hasn't missed this year from the line. I mean, look at this. Truth Harris has a hold of his wrist. And Hightower still gets up. Two for two Hightower. He's now 11 of 11 this year after going 9 for 9 to start his season against College of Charleston. And that's a veteran play. You see him attacking the bottom half of the opposite backboard from where the try originated. Exactly where it came off. But Arius Brewer just needs an inch to put it up towards the rim. That time was too heavy on the touch and the rebound for Western. Again, very little ball movement. Ball sticking on the offensive end of the half-court set. Mason Faulkner, we've seen a number of quick threes. That's the first to go down, but his confidence is not going to wane just because he misses the first two. The first time the lead has been to double digits. Western Carolina up 12. Like the only one that can answer right now is Ladarius Brewer. Truth Harris is going to try, not even close, and there's going to be a loose ball foul. I think Amafale was the one to draw it. Looked like Cork was unfairly keeping him away from the rim. So say our referee crew tonight, Will Howard, Jason Page, and Billy Dunlap. Buck spread the floor in a one-four set. Settled for a contested three by Harrison. Did not come close. Baseline out of bounds. And Brewer lobs it into Silas Adeke. Ladarius will get it back now from the man that Jason Shea called the defensive anchor for ETSU. Setting the pick there, Adeke. Smith drives, kicks it out to Ladarius Brewer. Another triple on the way, and he knocks it down. Bucks go empty in the post. Nice ball move. Brewer with the catch and conversion from the right wing. That would have been an incredible pass from Hightower down low to Langley. It never made it there, though, as the Bucks have another steal. Well, again, style points that look pretty, but too many active hands at this level. It was a 12-2 Western Carolina run before that three from Brewer. Smith going to try and build on it. Can't do so, and one of the littlest men in the court, Travion McRae, elevates for the rebound. Wide open look, no good, just long from Sincere McMahon, but a rebound for Hightower down in the right box. Somebody's going to have to get a body on Hightower. That's two possessions he's kept live. And hits his first three of the year, and Hightower is doing it all for Western Carolina. You can see what he means to this team. Mark Prosser said a whole new dynamic that he brings now that he's eligible. And Ladarius Brewer is out there in pretty good shape defensively with high hands, but you have to physically enter high tower space and run him off the line. A decade tried the tough reverse rebound for Faulkner. They did say that that was a two, so we'll see if they look at the monitor in break. 
Change it to a three as Faulkner goes over two men. Had it bounce off the rim twice. Rebound for Ladarius Brewer off the carom. Adeke, middle of the paint, surrounded by Catamounts. That's Rip, but a jump ball, and it's ETSU on the possession error. So the two from Hightower is what they'll reward. He's got eight to lead Western Carolina. The Catamounts doubling up the box in Freedom Hall here on, here on ESPN+. Plus. Western Carolina 22, ETSU 11 in Freedom Hall. Mason Faulkner's one for five from the field, and Matt Halverson hasn't taken a shot, but this man, Corey Hightower, has showed that he has the entire offensive package. This ruled a two on the floor, Bruce, and you tell me. Yeah, I think Tough those, angle. Feet are, those feet are on the line. I'm, I'm with Rick Pitino, though. Court geography, know where you are, step back. That point could become valuable later in the game. Great shot, nonetheless, by Hightower. Not taking anything away from that young man. Dead center. He's got eight points. Four rebounds as well. Leading the team in both categories as an off-ball foul before ETSU is able to get their baseline out of bounds going. Halverson's first and the fourth on Western Carolina. ETSU does have seven fouls already. Two on Damari Monsanto. That's why you haven't seen him out there for the last number of minutes. And that's been a point of emphasis for Western. We touched on it, Mike, early. Although they played a lot of minutes, Faulkner and Cork both with multiple disqualifications on fouls early. They have to be around late in this game. And for ETSU, they desperately need a second score right now outside of Damari Monsanto. That's what he's been lately, but he's not on the floor right now because of that foul trouble. Ten of the 11 points for ETSU scored by that man, Ladarius Brewer. Tries to drop it off to a Mopole down low. Did that go off of McCray last, or was it Harris? They say McCray. ETSU keeps the ball seven on the shot clock. Short four, Buck's going to have to get something early. If you're off the ball, you know the shot's coming quick. So offside guys start attacking that opposite side of the backboard for the offensive board. Ty Brewer, count it, and the foul. Hoop Harm headed to the line. The Southeastern Louisiana transfer. Straight line drive with the athleticism to hang in the air and the strength to play through contact at the rim. Let's see. Shortly after a timeout, Brewer makes this toss. Does ETSU press a little bit? Maybe try to change tempo, make Western a bit uncomfortable? But select a state, half court man to man. The Brewer brothers now five of seven from the floor with 13 of the Bucks' 14 points, but Ty has struggled offensively as Faulkner drives and kicks it in the corner for McCray. ETSU could really use Brewer returning to his southeastern Louisiana form to help this offense. Down low, Langley tries to answer. That goes off of the back of Harris. He's able to turn around and find the ball. Western Carolina just quicker to the ball. Both ends of the floor. Rebounds now 17 to 10 for the Catamounts. Another three is fired from Faulkner. It's short, and he stares at the ceiling after the loose ball foul goes on the Catamounts. Faulkner trying to find himself. And that was a great job of on-ball defense by Nyblack. Not only getting the hand up, but physically getting into Faulkner's space, barely giving him just enough room to come down, making him uncomfortable from distance. It's not our first option, but it is second option. Langley was the one that was whistled for that foul. That's his second. Xavier Cork back out there for the Catamount. So too Monsanto for ETSU. Amafale, cross-court pass. Nyblack eyes it, tries it, but can't hit it. Saved by Cork, but right to Ladarius Brewer. Brewer won't miss that one often. A finger roll as he hung above the rim. And that's a play. Cork is better off carrying that into the concession stand rather than throwing it back in blindly. Great athletic play to get that rebound in the open floor. But live ball turnover, ETSU with a quick hitter. Halverson's first hoist, and he hits. Having his best shooting year, 44% from three-point range, and he's top five in the nation in both threes made and threes attempted. And he has to produce. He has to take that shot. 51 minutes on this floor. One field goal attempt, and he nailed it. Monsanto answers back. Now let's see if Western attacks him. He 
ETSU man-to-man -man in Monsanto with two fouls. But Court goes to the rim and throws it down. This game picking up some pace on the offensive end. Back and forth they go. And where's the sense of urgency for ETSU defensive transition? Giving up a dunk after a made basket? Amafale was second to it. Nice hands by Cork Hightower, the takeaway. Long telegraph pass through traffic. Beautiful back cut from Faulkner and another nice find by Cork. And a timeout for ETSU as the lead is built back to double digits. It was 22 to 16, but a quick 7 to 2 burst from Western Carolina as we will keep it here with 4.34 to go in this first half. Early on, Bruce, who did you think the pace of the game and how it was unfolding favored? We talked about this being a fire versus fire matchup. Western Carolina top 40 offense that shares it, shoots it, good from the outside and from the floor, while ETSU a top 40 defense that forces mistakes and limits opponents from the field. 23rd in the nation in opponent field goal percentage, 37.5%. But right now, Western Carolina's offense, who have hit three of their last three, showing no signs of slowing down. Now the Southern Conference play is here. Well, the defense is setting up the offense. Western taking charge defensively, literally. Took three charges in the first seven minutes. They've been very good in the half-court set. Even better in defensive transition. Not allowing the Bucks anything easy. A decade Monsanto, Ladarius Brewer, Ty Brewer, and the man walking it up, Marcus Nyblack for ETSU. If you're just joining us, David Sloan not playing tonight for the Buccaneers. A transfer point guard, so point guard duties entrusted to not only their freshman, Marcus Nyblack and Truth Harris, but point forward, Ladarius Brewer. And a charge, the first one ETSU's taken today, Hightower, the guilty party. Set play, ATO. Monsanto gets a clean look, can't knock it down. Very good job bouncing the floor, defense in transition. Adeke sprinting back, getting into the paint. Actually, second charge, Adeke took a charge, first possession. Second foul on Hightower. So that's a big one for the Catamounts. Joins Langley on the bench. Ty Brewer, a decade, who does have some range. Cork knows it, not giving him any space. And Travion McCray, the lead whistle for the foul. That is the call, and McCray picks up his first. It will be free throws for ETSU, a one and one. That's the eighth foul on Western Carolina here in this first half. Who have a 10 point advantage over the host tonight, ETSU. 3.55 to go in the first half here for Freedom Hall. Western Carolina and ETSU at Freedom Hall in Johnson City, Tennessee. Each team's Southern Conference regular season opener. Have already had a couple of games in the SoCon. Played in the last 24 hours. A matinee tip-off for Chattanooga and Furman today. And last night on ESPNU, it was Wofford and Mercer. It's a one and one for Ladarius Brewer out of the timeout. Sees his brother get the rebound. Ty Brewer picks up Ladarius and gets the second chance points. Nothing more demoralizing for a defense than to get a stop, force a miss, and then give up an easy one. See if that's a spark for ETSU. Ty Brewer with a hustle play. McCray, Halverson, just enough room to take it and make it. I'm convinced he can make it from there. ETSU can ill afford to drop off of him and dig. If your philosophy is, I'll believe it when I see it, then Matt Halverson is showing it so far. Ty Brewer knocks one down himself. That is just his third three of the season outside of a one minute span against Austin P, where he hit three in that one minute. And now a steal as that goes through Harris's hand. Ty Brewer to the heights with the hammer. Ty Brewer coming to life, and Mark Prosser needs a timeout. Bucks have made four of their last five, offsetting Western Carolina's four straight field goals, and defense to offense for ETSU. Sixth steal that led to that dunk. 
And it all started, Mike, with the hustle play, the missed free throw. Ty Brewer beating two purple jerseys to the loose ball. Follows it up with the jam in transition. The juniors' minutes kind of dwindled recently. After playing 20-plus in his first six for ETSU, only logged 18 and 16 in his last two games, respectively. <laughs> Ranked fifth in the Southland last year, Bruce, shooting 48% from the field over the course of the season. Hadn't reached that mark in a game yet this year, entering today, but the four shots he's taken have all gone down. It's been a struggle for him, but I love his energy tonight. Thought he was very patient, let the game come to him. And has just absolutely taken over in the last minute. Found it here for Western Carolina. It'll be Halverson. He's got Cork, Faulkner, McCray, and Hightower out there with him. So keep an eye on Hightower playing with two fouls. Monsanto likewise for the Bucks. Hightower ice win against Brewer and another steal for ETSU. Here's the four on two. Ladarius Brewer wasn't looking. And the brothers not on the same page as that went off of Ladarius' back and out of bounds. But who was it made the play defensively with the quick feet and active hands? Ty Brewer. Played together most of their lives, but there's going to be a lapse here and there still. As Halverson almost picked by Ladarius Brewer, but this time a foul call. That's number eight on the Bucks this half. It'll be a one and one. And it was Ladarius Brewer, his second, so fouls mounting just a bit. Monsanto and Ladarius Brewer with two to join Langley and Hightower for Western. That could be costly because Halverson almost automatic at the free throw line. If he doesn't miss from 25 feet, with two hands in his face, not likely to miss these either. And it's no coincidence. This young man spends a lot of time in the gym. 85% from the line this year. Second on the team with 16 points per game. One of three brothers. Younger brother. Of, wow. The broadcaster, James. Sometimes it's delayed. In this case, it was. One of two for Halverson. An old bro older brother that played at ETSU. A younger brother, a freshman on this Western Carolina squad. Adeke finds himself all alone in the paint. And when they're that easy, it's no wonder that Adeke is pushing 70% from the field this year. Bullet pass from Monsanto. Now, where's that Western Carolina defense we saw in the first 16 minutes? ETSU showing some defense of your own. Here's Ty Brewer with the windmill. Oh, we to blow the roof on Freedom Hall. And the 618 are on their feet. The Bucks within three. Ty Brewer absolutely taking over since the four-minute media timeout. McCray reverses floor over to Harris, who quiets the crowd. His second field goal, Western Carolina's hit five from out there of the 11 that they've taken. 46% from three, cannot leave him. Brewer went one step too deep. Monsanto halfway down before it came out, and the Catamounts are trying to end this from, with the momentum. Mason Farr, that would have given Western Carolina all of that momentum and their lead that was previously double digits back. One of a number of quick triggers for Mason Faulkner in the first period. He's just one of six from outside. The rest of the team, four of six. And a number of those very early in the possession. Ty Brewer fouled, bumped to the floor by Harris. Number nine on Western for Harris, it's his second, and Ty will try to keep his spectacular first half going. Keep an eye on these numbers. Three frontline players from Western, Mike, two personal fouls each. Harris, Hightower, and Langley. Cork with one. Fifteen of eighteen from the line this year is Ty Brewer. Just eight points per game after averaging 15 for contest last year on the Southland Conference. It's right down the middle on the first. Such a nice stroke from the free throw line for a big guy. Good dip, good lift. Little bounce in his legs. Waves goodbye. Right amount of heart. 
Second one's too heavy, and the rebound for McCray. As Cork is behind the play, so is Hightower. Halverson's fouled, misses it short, but he's going to have three free throws. Sorrell Smith with a three on five. Western Carolina had two players behind the play. A silly foul. I'm not sure he believes that he committed it, but the call's there from Howard Page and Dunlap. Those in stripes tonight, and this gives Halverson a chance to extend the lead back out to eight. And that's on the scouting report. Halverson's a veteran player, but he's a flopper. He's going to sell it. Does just that. He'll go to the line for three. As we said, 85%. Nothing but net on the first. Well, my question to you was, when the possession began, does the TSU, or does, excuse me, does Western go quick and try to get a two for one? And if you're feeling it like Mike Halverson, absolutely yes. What'd you think of that call? Yep. Looks like there was contact, to be fair to Halverson, though perhaps exaggerated. I'm for protecting the shooters. I have to let him come down. I wouldn't say it's rare to hit all three for a shooter like Halverson, but I'd say across collegiate basketball, it doesn't happen often, but Halverson, as good of a shooter as he is, able to knock down the trio. Six second difference shot and game clock. Ty Brewer to his brother Ladarius. Monsanto flashed in the paint. Mid-range jumper. Brewer smooth on. Cuts to five. Last possession of the half. Halverson, who's been more aggressive in the second half of this first half, loses it. Ladarius Brewer the other way. Time winding down. McCray knocks it out of bounds. Almost simultaneously, I think, as the clock went to triple Houston zeros. By hustle play. Perhaps step back it. off the missed free throw by Ty Brewer. Bucks fed off that. Bucks able to buy a few minutes with Damari Monsanto on the floor with those two personal fouls as well. 35 for ETSU and the starting five for Western Carolina. The Bucks go Ladarius Brewer, Sorrell Smith, Damari Monsanto, Silas Adeke, and the ball holder, Bonnie Patterson. It's Halverson, Harris, Faulkner, Hightower, Cork for Western Carolina as Monsanto misses on the three. Good position by Bonnie Patterson. Count it and the foul. Third offensive rebound for Bonnie Patterson and the stick back through contact. And ETSU has to do that in the second half. A seven rebound deficit. Absolutely lost the battle for loose balls in space. Bonnie Patterson setting the tip up. Again, attacking the lower portion of the backboard opposite where the shot was taken. Converts the three-point play. PTSU four of seven from the line today. Could Patterson be that third scorer? Not your pure, true number three, perhaps, on a night-in, night-out basis, but any way you can get those points is what ETSU will take right now. Cork. Eight in the nation and field goal makes Halverson with seven on the shot clock. What a three from way outside. I had to look again to make sure the shot clock wasn't at one, Bruce. That was deep. You can't leave him. Bucks cannot afford to drop whoever is guarding Halverson. 43% from outside. 16 points a game this year. Brewer, though, left alone. And he drains one to answer back. Also a guy you can't leave alone, and Western Carolina throws it away with Hightower trying to find Faulkner on the inbound. Offense is picking up a little bit. Halverson, Tyler Harris, Ladarius Brew. I think, Bruce, this is what ETSU imagined from their offense when they brought in Ty Brewer and got Ladarius off of his red shirt after his transfer. Guys that can score at three levels. Monsanto bangs one home, and ETSU has pulled into the lead. And that's a mismatch. Halverson can't guard Monsanto. Monsanto jabs him, gets Halverson back on his heels, <laughs> knocks down the clean look. Halverson's going to have to close harder. Halverson too strong, rebound. Knocked away from Hightower, and there's going to be a loose ball foul called. It's Sorrell Smith, and for Smith, that'll be number three. 
how can you how can you call that on anybody? That's three guys going for a loose ball, no advantage game. But back to Monsanto making that shot. Now I hope that sets up something aggressive. He's gonna have defenders flying at him. Like to see him bounce and take it to the rim. Take it away by Ladarius Brewer. He'll drive against the smaller Halverson. Spins one in. Eight nothing run over the last 45 seconds, and the Bucks are proving to be in the early stages of this second period the better offensive team, if only for a moment. That's a heady play by Brewer, keeping Halverson on his hip and blow by, blowing by him at the last moment. Hightower, easiest jumper he'll have all day, too strong. Smith, bullet pass down to Vonnie Patterson. Patterson turns around, leaves that one long, and the rebound for Hightower. They had Patterson a bit earlier. That pass was a couple seconds late, and that pass taken away by Sorrell Smith. Smith with the finger roll. 10-0 run, and Mark Prosser's got to be thinking about a stoppage. Ill-advised telegraph pass by Faulkner. Sorrell Smith read his eyes. Nothing will calm the tensions like Matt Halverson, though. Well-timed timeout for Mark Prosser. He let his catamounts play through that early onslaught. And then Halverson, after the three, he calls. Today's first Horizon player bio for Western Carolina, it's Mason Faulkner. Not a lot of guards in the country that are the all-around talent that Faulkner is. Transferred in from Northern Kentucky after the 2017-18 season. Had to sit out the 2018-19 season due to transfer rules. But in his debut last year, 18 points, 6 assists, and most impressively to me, 6 rebounds. That's just six foot one for ETSU. Their Northern Kentucky transfer, Silas Adeke, began his two years for the Norse in the 2018-19 campaign, missing Faulkner by a season. Became a starter his second year there, and now here at ETSU on his fourth institution, finishing out his collegiate career. Ladarius Brewer rims that one around and out, and the rebound is for that's Mason Faulkner. Speaking of which, Faulkner's had a tough day today. It continues as he slips down on the drive. Harris able to come away with a loose ball. Faulkner coming up a little gimpy. Hadn't been 100% all year. Cork softly drops one in after lowering the shoulder into Silas Adeke. Tied at 26. Not much of a factor offensively in the first half. Cork imposing his will. Backs Adeke down for the point blank toss. You mentioned Mason Faulkner looking a bit gimpy. He has been battling an ankle injury all year, but Mark Crosser told me today about as close to 100% as he's been all season. Dory Monsanto from the left wing. No good, and the rebound for Cork. And that's settling. He's putting him in space. When he's in rhythm, very difficult to stop. Well, and the ball changed sides of the floor, had ETSU in a chasing rather than defending mode. Faulkner, the clean look and knockdown. After the box, 10 0 run, an 8 0 span here for the Catamounts. Amopoli and Ty Brewer back in the next step ball for ETSU, and a shoulder block there on Tyler Harris. And we come to the under-16 timeout. Western Carolina answering what ETSU is able to deliver in the early stages of the second half. Catamounts 49, ETSU 46 here on ESPN+. Plus. in Johnson City. What happened to Western Carolina that year after they beat ETSU? So I may be demanding, but at least you know what you're getting from me. I'm already 0 for 4 this year. So <laughs> I have a feeling the streak will continue. I'll give you the answer at the under-12 timeout. Ladarius Brewer gets into the right box, has to pick up his dribble. Now has it back after McCray knocked it away. Speaking of knocking it away, it's a steal for Hightower. Hightower at the rim, counted and one. Veteran play by Hightower in the open floor. Slows down off the bounce. Allowing Amafile just enough time to catch up and knock him to the floor. If you're Amafile, you either put him into the third row or you let him go. You absolutely cannot give up the and one in transition. A little bit of ETSU's own medicine from Hightower. That steal leading to points. And it's now a 10-0 run. Make it 11. And you could see Hightower off the bounce, turning around and looking for defenders and embrace the contact. 
about Damari Monsanto bringing the ball up for ETSU now. A behind the back dribble. He goes all the way in. What a finger roll from Monsanto. Coast to coast. Who says that's not his game? And, and it's there every time. It's there for the taking. No way Halverson guards him in the open floor. Monsanto, too big, too athletic, gets the and one. That breaks that 11 nothing run. And ETSU, who were reeling for just a few moments, down six. We'll see Monsanto try to get his ninth point today. If I had told you, Bruce, that, let's see, 40 of 48 points, maybe not that high of a percentage on the year as Monsanto rims out the free throw. Charlie Weber, who's checked in over the back, trying to tap the rebound out. What percentage of points would you have said coming into the year that Ty Brewer, Ladarius Brewer, and Damari Monsanto would score for the Bucks this season? It would have to be 50. Significant 50, amount 50, at the very 60, least. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So perhaps things starting to shake out how ETSU fans, their staff, pundits, onlookers would have imagined. As McCray, the seeds part for him. Weber, a good contest without fouling. Rebound for Ladarius Brewer. Ty Brewer, big first half. And he's still hot. Tough fall away jump shot. Cuts the lead in half. Showing the ability to score over length. Court mirrors the shot, contest. Brewer just made a play. Cork, what a catch by Hightower. That was coming a mile a minute from Cork's right hand. Beautiful catch by Hightower, and he draws the foul. That's a self-defense catch. That ball goes through his chest if, if he doesn't corral it. Bullet pass by Cork. And that's a tough play, not only, Mike, because of the velocity, but that ball's coming through active hands and long arms, too. Can't convert the first free throw, though. First miss of the year after starting 11 for 11, Hightower. He joins Matt Halverson and Mason Faulkner in double figures today. As Bonnie Patterson will replace Ladarius Brewer. That was Ladarius's third foul. He joins Sorrell Smith with three. Makes the second, does Hightower. And it's a three-point lead. Smith's running point with the three fouls. Not his natural position. Certainly capable. Weber, who's got the ball here, has played just four minutes on the season, Henry, tonight. Ty Brewer can stay much smaller. Travion McCray, another fall away. Different result that time, and the rebound fought for by Weber, one by Hightower, and a foul after Hightower claimed the board. I don't like the fadeaway for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a lower percentage shot. Number two, it's against a, a smaller defender. Also, I know you're not an advocate of offensive rebounding by the shooter, but it takes the shooter out of the play. Now, I never said I wasn't, but when we've talked about it before, I have just informed you that there are those out there that do not want the follow your those, shot tell. Those who clearly never saw Larry Bird play. McCray, baseline drive. Faulkner hits again. Starting to heat up is Faulkner, Bruce. It was a quiet start. It was one for his first five. Now three for his last five. And set up by the dish, draw, and hammer pass to the corner. Monsanto long two, no good. On the bounce, Sorrell Smith has it stolen. Here comes Xavier Cork with the reverse layup. The big man in transition. How about the big guy in the open floor off the bounce, shielding the defender with his head, neck, and shoulders while he finishes with the reverse layup off the glass. What an athletic play by that young man. Western firing on all cylinders have hit six of their last seven from the field. A decade. One for five today. A rare off day for him offensively. Ty Brewer, though, another three. That's his second ETSU seven. Brewer, seven of eight from the floor. Great read by a decade. That's not a natural pass from a big going from one block to the opposite corner. Great read, great pass. Brewer getting downhill. Misses that chance, but he will go to the line. Faulkner tried the pocket pass to get it to cork across the paint. But ETSU's hands so active, seems like they're always moving and getting in passing lanes. Steal number 12 will send Brewer to the line. And 
you see Brewer attacking the rim last couple of shots. Straight up or the fade away this time into the defender. Actually initiates the contact. High percentage shooter will go to the line for two. DTSU with some options should he make toss number two. It's a big deep breath as we all need to in the second half. It has been highly entertaining back and forth basketball. That's halfway down and rolls out from Ty Brewer. Now two of four from the line today. Jason Shea looking on and he is probably tired of seeing the free throw struggles. It's been a season long struggle for ETSU. Terrell Smith out. ETSU has Monsanto, Ladarius, and Ty Brewer. Silas and Deke, who has the offensive rebound here off the second miss. Also, Vonnie Patterson out there. Ladarius from 10 feet. Twice off the heel and a loose ball foul on, judging by the reaction, it might be Hightower. Instead, they called on Langley and he just checked back in after getting a couple of fouls early and picks up his third. Hightower out. Here comes Sincere McMahon, who started the two games that Mason Faulkner was out earlier this year with ankle soreness. There are also non-D1 games. McMahon was big against those two, but has had a quiet season otherwise. So Western with three post players, three personal fouls each. To keep an eye on that down the stretch. Nestling it into the nylon. Ladarius Brewer, he just forced his way inside and would not take no for an answer. No cork on the floor. No shot blocker. Brewer imposes his will inside the logo. Langley, he's hitting 56% of his shots this year. Tries to muscle a decade. Good defense, better offense. How about using the window to his advantage. The left hand off the glass, denied the paint, turns baseline, the soft touch off the banking board. What a pass from Brewer. A decade, the beautiful setup from Ladarius Brewer. That is his second helper today, ETSU. 11 assists now and a great catch by Adeke. It was a great catch. Normally don't like to see Biggs put it on the floor, but Adeke had to, to settle himself, and that's okay. Used flexible hips, kept it low. Patterson lost McMahon, who rolls one off the rim. Loose ball, and it's Langley. Another loose ball rebound. Langley rebounding from sideline to sideline. Plus eight on the glass, Western Carolina. McMahon behind the screen, up fakes, extra pass, Faulkner. Good recovery by Monsanto. They find Harris in the corner with the shot clock buzzer ringing out. Monsanto the rebound. And a rare respite as Ladarius Brewer walks it up. Heavy action. You see some, some guys breathing hard on both ends now. They'll welcome the next media. That'll be a block. It's falling to the floor was Travion McRae. And there is that media timeout you discussed. An offensive exhibition here in this second half. 46 combined points. Western Carolina 93 to 91 the victory. That the year that Western won their only conference postseason tournament in program history. This back when the SOCOM was split into North and South divisions, they won the South, won the tournament, went on to their only NCAA tournament, nearly pulled off a 16-1 upset over Purdue as Silas Adeke lays it in off the window and gets ETSU within one. High-low out of the baseline out of bounds. But that 96 Western team led by Anquel McCallum, longtime assistant to the late Larry Hunter and one of the all-time nice guys in the Southern Conference. Hope you're, hope you're watching this, Anquel. Beautiful find by Cork. He's been exceptional passing out of the post today, Bruce. Yes, he has. Tremendous vision. And how about that play in the open floor, too? Xavier Cork with the bounce and finish at the rim. A couple of nice assists. One that Hightower had to catch in self-defense. Ten minutes to go in this seesaw affair full of explosive offense. Mari Monsanto left that baby hook short. Hightower clears the glass. Still, like the thought, Monsanto aggressive, bouncing into the paint. Halverson. And you know that Monsanto is not going to slack off him an inch. Ten on the shot clock. 
much going this possession for Western Carolina. McMahon to Cork, who's going to have to fire from straight on. Halfway down and out. He's hit 70% of his field goals. He half expected it, and it halfway went to go down the way he's been shooting. It's his first try from beyond the, the arc this season. Swish from Damari Monsanto. The baseball pass with the right hand from Ladarius Brewer. We've seen some fantastic dimes dropped on both sides. And that's a matchup that favors ETSU. Difficult for Halverson to cover Monsanto in space. He's doing what he wants offensively right now. Back even at 62. Hightower had it knocked away by Ty Brewer as we're going to have a sub apiece for either side. Maybe two for Western Carolina. It's Travion McRae and Mason Faulkner for Western. Now go Harris and McMahon, ETSU. We'll have Monsanto. Darius Brewer, Monsanto is leaving. I thought I saw six out there. How did that chest high pass get through the lane? Three quarter court. Ty Brewer out there now as well. With Sorrell Smith, Salas Adeke, Vonnie Patterson, who gave Halverson some room. That's an air ball though. Rare, ugly attempt from Halverson on the floor. ETSU looks like they have it. Is it going to be a reach and foul on Faulkner? That looked to be the call. Indeed. Sorrell Smith was about to secure Ladarius Brewer, <laughs> reaching down there to almost tie up his teammate. Smith protecting the ball from Brewer. And with 8.39 to go, now in the penalty for the Catamounts. It's a one and one on their seventh team foul in this final 20 minutes of regulation. We've seen ETSU throughout the course of the season defend baseline out of bounds with a big on a guard. This time they play straight up. Terrell Smith, 14 of 18 from the line this year. Perfect on the first. The Bucks with the lead back. Second one's true. Sorrell Smith has four. Has had a tough day and season from the field, but still contributing where he can. Faulkner, doubled. Good bounce pass. Cork elevates. Has it roll out. Oh. Every part of the rim, and Cork frustrated going back the other way. Western goes empty in the post. Cork just finds a seam. Can't convert the open look. Adeke. Ty Brewer on fire. Ty Brewer, his eighth field goal, third three, and the Bucs are up five. And ETSU continues to attack wherever Halverson is matched up. No way he defends Brewer. Too much size. Halverson answers back. The Bucks are on an 8-0 run. Earlier in this contest, it was a 10-0 run. Both of those broken by Halverson triples. It's Saturday afternoon at the Carver Rec Center. Team's trading baskets. Defense optional. 67 to 65, ETSU is on top. The Bucs had not given up more than 70 points until the Alabama game. They're on the verge of doing that, but they have 67 of their today's game free presented by Regional Eye Center. And Bruce, it seems like the story of this game has been before Ty Brewer showed up. And then once he was able to get on the floor and start to find his range, eight of nine from the field, 21 points. Well, Western dominated the game prior to the four-minute media timeout in the first period. Then a missed free throw by Ladarius Brewer. Ty Brewer with a follow-up in the hustle play. ETSU has fed off that energy and been the aggressor since that point. Ladarius and Ty are out there for ETSU with Sorrell Smith, Silas Adeke, and Bonnie Patterson. Smith doubled Adeke. It's in. Doubles the lead, 69-65. And ETSU continues to attack Halverson. Sorrell Smith able to bounce into the paint past Halverson. Western has to help. There's an open man. As Western in a chasing rather than a guarding mode. Halverson. Harassed by Vonnie Patterson, the Bucks' best on-ball defender, forces him to pass it off. Five on the shot clock. In a tight spot, McCray. High tower has to hoist. Too far, didn't hit the rim. Would have been a shot clock violation. Rebound for Ladarius Brewer. Great job in the half court set. Western starting their offense near the division line. 
Ty Brewer. Oh, he can't be stopped. 4-3, ninth field goal, 24 for Ty Brewer. Welcome to ETSU. The brother of Ladarius is showing up big tonight. Just find some open space. Brother Ladarius with the skip pass. Ty Brewer, the catch and conversion, extends the buck lead to seven. And I think they're going to review. Silas Adeke remains down after the play. So perhaps a high elbow, Bruce, or a throw down, hook and hold. Could be uh, yes, just about very, anything. Very possible. Anytime there's any contact to the upper body, particularly the head, neck, and shoulders, worthy of taking a look. One of the hustle plays of the evening, ETSU team position, Ralph Mills, ready to run on the floor if needed. Doesn't look like they found anything. And indeed, they're going to get back to action. Western Carolina trying to stop the bleeding. It's a 13-3 run, ETSU, over the last 222, four of their last four from the field. And if you would have said to many that have watched this Buccaneer team or this Western Carolina team this year, who's going to win in a shootout, their answer would have been the visitors tonight. So far, not the case. Come on, baby. ETSU, the aggressive One more time, I'm sorry. Now, picking up full court. The breakfast was good. Harris trying to force a pass down low, went off of ETSU last. Silas <laughs> Adeke, who gets off the floor, did get a flop warning before the last timeout, so he's got to be careful. Next one would be a technical foul, although that looks like legitimate contact. Arm straight up. Much better job getting in a good guarding stance, stopping dribble penetration. Alabama's guards Tuesday, last Tuesday, able to bounce into the lane at will. Nice stop for the Bucks. Shot clock violation. Not sure that Xavier Cork knew how much time was left on that possession. Tried to fire the pass cross court and down seven now. It's danger territory for Western Carolina. Can he go to anyone except Tyler Darius Brewer? 18 of 23 from the floor, 7 of 10 from deep combined today. But Arius has it here. The deck ain't gonna go to work. Back cut by Patterson. Beautiful spin and puts it down. A little hesitation move just throws Hightower. And then Patterson with the blow by and finish at the rim. Faulkner finds court, blocked from behind by Ladarius Brewer, but that is going to be his fourth foul. And if you're going to get your fourth, get your money's worth. Good, hard, clean foul on the shooting arm. Took away the and one, going to make court go to the line and earn it. Goodness, did Ladarius Brewer see his chance defensively to capacity crowd into an uproar as Cork is the first free throw. And that's the natural reaction to, to stop that. Three personal fouls going into that play and a nine-point lead. Maybe Ladarius rethinks that. Much improved free throw shooter this year, Xavier Cork, knocks down both. He shot 47% for the charity strike last year, 72% this year. Seven-point game. Darius Brewer out, Damari Monsanto in. Johnny Patterson cut off. Deke and Cork still doing battle. It's been a rough and tumble fight for both of them today. And rolling across the lane, Silas Adeke shows the finesse. You have to know the scouting report, knowing that Adeke wants to go to his left in space. The running hook shot over length. Harris up fakes. Good switching by ETSU. Five on the shot clock for Western Carolina. Faulkner steps into a three, not even close. And I think that's going to be, is it a foul? No, they'll just stay out of bounds. 
Sorrell Smith was thrown to the court. About 30 feet from the basket. But no foul, no harm, so say the referees. And it'll be ETSU's possession with a chance to extend to double figures for the first time today. Billy Dunlap said this is Division I basketball. Conference play, get used to it. Faulkner called for the foul, and that's his third. Eighth on Western Carolina, it'll be free throws. Advantage ETSU if Western has to guard full court. They don't want to pick up beyond free throw line extended defensively. They don't want to chase in the open floor. Without their second leading scorer tonight, ETSU has had their best offensive night. Six of their last six from the wow. floor, shooting 51% from the field. Much better in the second half, Mike, and the half court set in terms of ball movement. We haven't seen it sticking in one player's hands. Like we've seen in previous seasons. Swinging the ball sideline to sideline, working it north and south, drawing the defense. Smith still perfect from the line. Now four of four today. court is saying, we're not going to touch this. You have no remedy. Basically, in effect, the ruling would be that you've got to go to the street and do a silent and a foul called on Patterson. That's okay. Jason Shane will take that. She did what they wanted. And that's it. Turning Halverson from how a catch and shoot into a catch and bounce. How, many, how much violence is too much? Second on Patterson, seventh mm -hmm. on ETSU. So Halverson, who is near automatic, though has missed one today. I should say missed two today. Well, step back to the strike. Got it. Leads Western in scoring today. Just seven field goals to get to... Is now 19 points. And didn't have there. And remember, didn't have a try the first 15 minutes. You'd think that maybe they'd get it in his hands a bit more with the offense slowing over the last three and a half minutes. No field goals, but Halverson, I'm sure he's the one to create their own shot. I think they'd like to. Vonnie Patterson has a say, and that is the problem for Western. Deke was right at the rim and tried to do too much. Threw it right between Patterson and Ty Brewer. Good thought. I think Deke didn't realize how open he was. Hightower hurried into the front court and lost it. Three on two. Euro step from Smith. Nice poke away by McCray. And with 4.01 to go in this second half, ETSU will keep the ball up 10. And was that Ty Brewer with active hands and the knock away on the defensive end? Catching the defense, napping with Sorrell Smith. Vonnie Patterson right at the rim, draws the foul. How does he get that open on baseline throw-in? Travion McCray said, I'm working. I'm working on the thrower. You have to defend, guys. We're down by 10. ETSU, 78. Western, 68. The game the is a it's play what the that changed the, the game. Back. The underdogs. It truly means did. constantly. 16 minutes, Western dominates defensively. ETSU looking for a spark. They get it off a missed free throw. Ty Brewer, the rebound in space and the stick back. Only two points at the time. But the Bucks fed off that, led to a rally. ETSU able to carry momentum into the half. And out of the half, Ty Brewer has been spectacular. 24 points on 9 of 10 from the field. 4 of 4 from 3. Bonnie Patterson sends one through. Bucks can build their lead to 12 with this free throw. Look at the box score, Bruce. His brother Ladaria says 21 points, seven rebounds, seven steals as well. Patterson misses the second free throw. Offensive rebound by a decade. Brewer step back three before that. Speaking of offensive rebounds off missed free throws. I think they have to reset the shot clock. Yes, to 16, so it was a missed reset. To... Should have been a reset 20. They reset the, the full amount. Cost the Bucks a basket, but a good job of officiating. That, that could have become an advantage. Ty Brewer likely won't have too much forgiveness for that mistake. Any space that he gets, he's looking to fire. How could you not? How efficient he's been. 
There he is again. Just short. KTSU milked that clock down to three as they're up 11 and taking all the time they can right now. That is not Western Carolina's friend at the moment. And one for McCray right at the rim. Western not done yet. Straight line drive. McCray with the offhand finish. Second on Ty Brewer, eighth on ETSU in this half. McCray's got seven, also four rebounds and five assists. ETSU 17 assists on 30 field goals, 14 on 24 for Western Carolina. Out goes Sorrell Smith. Darius Brewer back in. McCray cuts the lead to eight. Western a half-hearted full court press. They'll drop back. Not comfortable at all guarding in the opponent's backcourt. Let's see if the Bucs use some more clock here. Settles the decade out here, the logo. Brewer Brothers on the right side. Great position for a decade. That bounces off. A decade gets it back and scores. Second chance points for ETSU today, 15 to four. Big advantage and the advantage of the game 10, that advantage 11. You can see where part of this game has changed. Bucks with a seven rebound deficit in the first period. They flipped that in the second half. Alverson just tried a 35 footer. That may even be outside his range. As desperation time starts for Western Carolina. Now ETSU into some time and score decisions. They can afford to run a little clock. Jamari Monsanto. That was ugly. Barely hit rim. Fell into the hands of Harris. They need buckets and in a hurry does Western. Cork gives the one. I think he may have turned his ankle on the way down. But he looks all right, trotting back. Two minutes to go, eight-point game. Don't have to foul here if you're Western. They're going to elect to play out this possession. Steal by Harris. Three on one, four on one if they hurry. And Harris, and one! Steals and turnovers have worked in ETSU's favor the entire day. But as we get to crunch time, the Catamounts staying alive with just that. Worst case scenario possible for ETSU. The live ball turnover early in the possession. The Darius Brewer, the soft foul in transition, giving up the and one. And the insult to injury, personal foul number five on Ladarius Brewer. Absolutely huge. 21, 7, 7, and 4. Stuffing the statue, Ladarius Brewer, but he won't see the end of this one. Harris, 58% from the free throw line, and makes a clutch one. Five point game. And the Bucs' top scoring option on the season. Out for the rest of this one. Patterson lost the ball. Harris has it, and a timeout for Western Carolina. I, I started to ask, Mike, do you foul Vonnie Patterson? He bails him out. Doesn't have to. ETSU is looking like they were going to coast to the finish at the under four timeout. And and that's a self-imposed wound there. That's that's minimal pressure. Okay, so this is the issue with not having David Sloan, an experienced ball hander who can win late in the game. Sloan missing today. Unavailable for head coach Jason Shea and company. You have two freshmen that can run the point and Marcus Nyberg and Truth Harris, but Shea has said again and again he doesn't feel comfortable giving the point guard position the ball handling duties to a freshman at this point. Normally reliable. Bonnie Patterson came in to the Knights action. Only six turnovers in 170 minutes. But an unfamiliar position for someone bringing up the ball that is not a point guard, plays more off the ball. In, in space against pressure. So Western down just five with the ball. Halverson, the inbounder. Now Buck. Harris Isos. McCray dishes it to Cork. It's a three point game. Somebody has to rotate down. Adeke slides over. Nobody drops. 
7-0 run inside of the last minute. Speaking of inside of the last minute, that's where we're headed. Monsanto, Smith, now Ty Brewer. A back and forth battle between these Blue Ridge rivals. Beautiful cut and the foul at the rim. It'll be Patterson heading for the strike. With three on the shot clock. Sorrell Smith drew the defense. Patterson with a nice catch. Now you have a low percentage shooter going to the line. Patterson, just 9 of 19 from the free throw line entering today, this season. 55% on his career today, 3 for 5. He's got two of them and misses the first. Scoring drought of exactly two minutes for the blue and gold. Second one. Got it. Four point game. Plenty of time for Western. Don't need a three. Need something quick, aggressive, and at the rim. Faulkner falls over, gets it back. Harris drives around Brewer, dishes it to Cork, and an offensive foul! Oh, halfway in between calls, it looked like. And Western Carolina's bench is furious. Been a point of emphasis this week in the ETSU camp. Defending dribble penetration. Silas Adeke sliding over. With the help of the straight line drive. Takes the contact in the chest. Was outside that charge circle, too. 41.7 to go. The Bucs have it back. Up four. And are they headed to the monitor? Yes, they are. A lot going on here. If you're, if you're Western, do you foul? Do you play out the possession? Bonnie Patterson's on the floor. If he catches, do you foul Patterson? Do you play the other straight up? And I believe they were checking to see if he was in that charge circle. And they say that the call was correct on the floor. Big I'll moment be honest there. with you, I didn't realize that was review. I've got you covered, Bruce. Though it may have been a guess, if we're honest. Say we're courtside, but we're actually in the concourse here at Freedom Hall, so don't have the benefit of we referees miss coming it. over we to miss us. the officials coming and talking to us, and Southern Conference officials do a great job, not only on the floor, but communicating with the media as well. ETSU has the ball up four. Damari Monsanto can't get it ahead, it's stolen. McCray to Harris. Harris back to McCray. Time is of the essence for Western. Harris is going to take a three and leave it short. Barely grazed iron, and Silas Adeke's foul. Wow. Bucks not exactly convincingly closing this out, Bruce, but Western Carolina not able to take advantage of their chances. Travion McCray, Western's best athlete and top on-ball defender. Damari Monsanto telegraphs the pass. McCray able to get the tip and catch. Harris with the clean look, couldn't get it to drop. So a decade to the line. So far this year, six of nine from the strike. Big free throws for the big man. First one misses. Wow, that looks like it was going to drop off that front rim, backboard front rim, and rattled away. ETSU empty on the lane, not wanting to risk a foul 90 feet from their defensive basket. That one didn't look comfortable for a decade. He misses both. Western, another chance. Still plenty of time. McCray has it swatted and saved in bounds by Patterson. A decade makes up for his misses with the rejection. And with 16.4 to go, while it's not over, certainly could feel way more out of reach with a couple of free throws. But the Bucks just two, or I should say 10 for 20 at the line tonight. I like the block shot. I love the soft block shot, keeping it in play, giving your teammates an opportunity to secure the defensive rebound. The Bucks a few free throws away 
from starting off the conference season 1-0. and Jamari Monsanto has missed his only free throw today. Makes that one. And both 8 of 9 from the line now this year. Damari Monsanto, 84 to 78. ETSU up by 6. Here's a question for you, Mike. Two possession game if you're ETSU. Do you consider a foul once the ball crosses into the front court? Considering you have guys like Matt Halverson across from you, who's 5 of 8 from outside. Now, Mason Faulkner did just foul out, so he won't be available. But you do have Halverson. I'd say you bring two guys to Halverson and take your chances. I'm not sure with a two-possession lead there's any reason to give up the three points, but time is in your favor. Just a thought that most coaches in this situation are certainly going to play it straight up. A number of scenarios present themselves. Also, if you're, if you're Western at this point, you probably have to take the three. Ball goes inside the arc. It's probably coming back. So if you're ETSU, do you defend outside in? History not on Western Carolina's side coming into tonight. Buccaneers 70 and 3 when shooting above 50% from the field in Jason Shea's time on staff and 72 and 13 in this building with Shea here in Johnson City. That being said, there is no David Sloan today for ETSU. They've overcome it so far. Six point game. Halverson, you know he wants to shoot it from out there. He'll drive. Bounce pass to Harris, they've got to put it up. Throw it cross court to Hightower, he will. Hasn't hit one all year, still hasn't hit one. Rebound for Sorrell Smith, and only for ceremony will Harris foul Smith. The Buccaneers are gonna get this done. And you'd say, Bruce, that while history was on their side tonight, I'm not sure that in this matchup pregame, you would have said that the favorites were the blue and gold. And ETSU did it with point guard by committee as well. It's a nice moment for ETSU fans that are welcomed into the building for the first time this year. Only 10% the capacity. Usually it would be four or 5,000 strong, but all 618 wasn't sound like many. They've certainly gotten loud for their Buccaneers at points tonight. Smith hits the first. Despite a one for six effort from the field tonight. Six of six from the line. He's got eight. And this one is over as McMahon lost the three and misses to the left of the rim. Your Wendy's player of the game, Bruce. 